I'm going to go through the basics of Google Earth, how to download the application, some basic fly to, how to make a marker, measuring distance. We'll look at the ways to change the geographic coordinate settings in the uh, tools or preferences, then end up with using KML files, which are keyhole markup language uh, files that are part of the, the Google Earth set of tools. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go ahead and download Google Earth. I'm going to agree and download. And there's my file, so I'm going to minimize that. Whoops. I'm going to not minimize that. Sorry, save file. There it is. And then I'm just going to grab this, put it on my desktop, double click it, choose run. Yes. And remember, uh, your PC setup may be different, but uh, this is this will give you at least a good idea of how to get it running. Okay, so once uh, Google Earth is installed, Go ahead and close my little notepad here. It should open up automatically for you. And it also installs Chrome, so I'm going to close that. There we go. So there's Google Earth. Um, it installed a uh, shortcut on my desktop. It starts out, um, should open up pretty much like the, the viewer I have on the desktop. So the first thing um, to do, the fly to used to be called fly to, it's the search. So the search window can do an address. So let's put in Lane Community College, 4000 East 30th Avenue. And I type that in and I hit the return button and um, it'll find an address for me. So there's the community college. It'll also find a latitude and longitude. So I'm going to do in decimal degrees uh, 44 point, um, I'm making this up, comma negative 123.5. And it knows that those are geographic coordinates. And it's going to go find that, that location for me. So I can type in uh, latitude and longitude easily. I can also now um, create my own place marker. So uh, let's say I'm going to zoom out. I'm using the roller bar on my mouse to zoom out. You can also zoom in and out with the slider tool over here. And I'm going to go to Fern Ridge Reservoir. And let's say I want students to be able to um, go to Fern Ridge and, and measure the, uh, the lake area. So I can use the Add Place Mark. Click that. Um, I can drag this around. And as you see, the latitude and longitude changes. Now this isn't in decimal degrees, this is in degrees, minutes, and seconds. So this will change as I move it around. So there's my place mark, and I'm going to actually put a title on here. And I can change uh, the color of my marker um, and the color of my text. and. I could even add an attribute if I if I wanted to, or add a, an image. I can say um, and 
choose OK. And then this becomes um, a more permanent bookmark. So here is the Fern Ridge Center. I click this. Um, I can get my, de my description was added into this and I have that now on my map. So let's say um, that's something from an older version I want to remove. Let's say I want to send that to an instructor or send that to a student. I can right click this and save place as and choose KML and uh, this is actually just going to go to my desktop folder but I could put that uh, in my class uh, in my lab 2 folder. Okay, so now if I close out of Google Earth and I open up that folder there's my KML file if I double click that KML file it launches Google Earth and it will zoom in uh, to that KML that I just input. So it's it's really uh, very handy. So let's say I want to measure um, the north-south length of Fern Ridge. I'm going to click the measuring tool and I think I want to measure a line and I want to measure in meters. So I'm going to click once and draw to the base. and click and that will end my line and it gives me um, the heading. Uh, so I'm not completely north-south, that'd have to be 180 degrees. Um, and it gives me how it gives me the length in meters. And I can also change it on the fly uh, without remeasuring it and find out how many miles that was or how many inches. Um, I can clear that. So let's say um, I want to actually identify um, a wetland area along the edge of the lake. Uh, so with this, I'm going to click the Add a Polygon tool. And I'm going to call this the West riparian so I've got the uh, west riparian area um, let's say I identify it as sedges I'm going to make the color around this dark green I want to make the area color a light green or blue and I want this to be a little transparent so I'm going to do my uh, set up my settings now I can begin to hold my left mouse down and then trace around the area that I'm identifying and choose OK and then what you see is my uh, Fern Ridge area I can look at properties and I could actually uh, change that opacity back to 100% if I wanted to see the area a little better. So there's the, the region that I identified. Again, um, say I'm working for somebody and they want me to identify the region that I'm going to uh, 
do a wetland study. So I could identify it on Google Earth. I could uh, actually just email that KML, but I think at this point we'll save as a KML. Save that. And the nice thing about KMLs is that you can attach them as a single file in an email. Um, so it attaches just like a Word document. So now I have both uh, the center of the lake and I have a, a riparian area uh, that I can measure. The final thing I want to show you in Google Earth is uh, under the Tools, Options. So sometimes I want my latitude and longitude coordinates to be in decimal degrees. Uh, I might also want them in degrees, decimal minutes. And so let's look at a couple different options. If I put this in decimal degrees and I put a pinpoint there's my decimal degree option. If I choose my tools options and put choose decimal or degree decimal minutes, let's put another place marker here. There is a degree with decimal minutes. And the option also is degrees, minutes, and seconds, which people are very familiar with uh, working with. Okay, then the final um, option I want to show you that we'll, we won't use in this lab is Universal Trans Mercator. This is uh, a, a grid system that was developed by the military and is used uh, in um, kind of high level or high um, um, degree of accuracy. It's a little easier to use than latitude and longitude. Uh, there are no negatives with um, UTM and so this would be read as zone 10 north which is the zone in Oregon in the northern hemisphere and you would read how many meters east and how many meters north. That's called a, a false easting and the false northing. But more about UTM later. Okay, so we learned how to download, how to use the search or the fly to, how to use place markers, distance measuring, uh, change the settings, and use a KML. The last thing I want to show you is the availability of KML files. So I'm going to go back uh, to this, and I'm just going to copy that um, URL. Launch Google, or yeah, launch Mozilla, and paste that site in here. There are uh, so many existing KML files, especially if you're um, looking in education or resource management. Both of these uh, disciplines tend to have a lot of KML files at their disposal. So one of the things I was interested in was say looking at Civil War campaigns. So I can click on download. Okay. I'm going to drag that K. It's a KMZ because it's more than one KML. Works the same. done that earlier as you can see. I'm going to move this down and if I double click this it actually adds those files to my site. And so we can zoom in and these things are somewhat scale dependent so they tend to show up once you've zoomed in enough. So there's one of the, the battles. We can just start clicking all of these uh, and when you begin to see the different battles. So there are tons of resources available already in existence for uh, Google Earth um, KMZ or KML files.